To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright thought that was a great white hope He was so pumped it was unbelievable how excited he was. He just found twenty-seven thousand dollars a year. Do you understand what I did? Does anyone understand it? Everyone yeah, understand? How do you find those people? What's that? How do you find those people? You put, open up your mouth. <laughs> how many people did you talk to today? How many people did you talk to today? A lot. How many? To, how many? Do you raise money? Are you trying to raise money? No, I mean I haven't started. Okay, you haven't started. Do you want to? Yes. Okay, then bring it up today. The problem that we have is we don't go to the people that we talk to every day. I'm telling you, you talk to 100 people today, right? Yeah. What's your, give me your elevator pitch. Start with your family. Give me your 30 seconds. Give me your 15 seconds. My family seconds. wouldn't give me five cents. Oh, right, you're not running the show. <laughs> I mean, you feel like, don't even jump in. I'll throw you out of the room. You'll end up in CSC. <laughs> Some baby without your husband. Thing. That might be a good thing. Right? <laughs> Tell me your elevator pitch. I'm way too shy for this. Huh? I'm way too shy for this. Excavator. I want a ten. Give me a ten-second elevator pitch. What do you do for a living? Uh, my name's Steve. Insurance. My name's Steve Lloyd. I raise capital for a living, and I buy distressed as assets across the United States. Boom. My name's Steve Lloyd. I raise capital for a living, right? And everyone in this room says I do real estate for a living. Say that six years ago when they were laughing at you, right? My name's Steve Lloyd. I raise capital for a living. I buy distressed assets across the United States. My name's Helen. I raise. I raise money. Um, I teach people self-directed IRAs and I flip amazing real estate deals. Really? You raise money? What does that mean? You raise capital? What does that mean? I'm telling you, the ear goes like this because they're used to saying, oh, you're an electrician. What do you do for a living? Huh? Do construction. What do you do? I'm my own business now. Export business. Okay, go. One of those guys again. What do you do? Dennis, lawyer. They hear the same thing. How many people? No, I'm not talking to you yet. No. How many people in this room? Right? What was my question that threw me off? Me being rude to you, I threw you off. I'm no, so confused. Is. How many people in this room have met someone that says, met someone that said to you, I raised private money for a living this year. I raised capital for a living. I raised money for my real estate deals. How many people? One. One. You gotta tell people what you do and people want to get involved with good people. I'm telling you, it's a no-brainer. I do network marketing. It's the hardest thing in the world. Right, I bring up network marketing. I was like, "What? I ain't doing that scam, Ponzi thing, whatever." Right, but you gotta have your. It's 15 seconds. You don't want to go on to 30. I used to hear 30. It's 10 seconds. Throw a word out there. I raise money for a living. I'm telling you, try it tomorrow. I'm gonna give you my phone number. I want you to call me tomorrow night. I'm really busy tomorrow night. I'm gonna be in Kentucky raising money. But I want you to call me. I want you to say it to at least 10 people. Just do it to 10 friends. Okay. But you always ask somebody else what they do for a living. And they will ask you, and I'm telling you, I sit down in Cape May at that bar, I'm just drinking, I'm like, there's another 100 grand, there's another 50 grand. Tell people what you do, that's the point. Tell them, I tell people what I'm looking for. If I'm doing network marketing, I'm telling them I'm saving people on energy. If I'm looking to buy a house, I'm looking to buy houses in this area. If I'm looking to raise money, I'm going, I'm looking to raise capital right now. I raise capital. So I can come up with four different things. It's all like what I need. The biggest thing I learned, the, really the past six months, is I don't tell people what I need. I tell people what I do. I'm a big shop real estate guy. I speak all over the country. And people don't want to hear that crap. They don't give two craps about me. Right? But then I tell people what I need. And it works. I get a little pumped up. You think he likes real estate. I get credit. <laughs> right? So home equity line of credit is very powerful. If you have them, use them. If you're not educated, it's really simple. I'll show you how to do it a little bit more later. But uh, it's probably 20% of the money raised. Right now, I'm not doing it because I do private places. I'm not doing as many real estate deals. But if you're doing real estate deals, you better learn how to use someone's equity in their home. It's great. It's awesome. People don't have savings. They don't have savings. If people have savings, they're morons. <laughs> they are. You know why? Because <laughs> most people have equity in their home, and they fund their retirement. You talk to a person with money, decent amount of money, they don't have savings at 1%. They got it in their equity in their home and they got money going in their retirement money. That's where their money is. If I go, oh, let me some of your savings. Oh, no savings. Well, how about equity in your home? What are you talking about? You got equity there? Oh, we said these statistics and 
I'll give you 12, you make the spread, the arbitrage. That's why I give them this book, because the whole book is about making the spread. And the book sells it for you. I don't know anything about IRAs. Is, is everybody that has an IRA, can it be self-directed? We'll go really quick on that. That's not really, I'm just talking about you need to go to CAM and sit for an hour. But if you are, do you work for yourself or do you work for somebody? I work for myself, so I don't have an IRA. Okay, great. Did you just trying to ask, ask you how to access somebody who has IRA money. Okay, let's talk after. Let's talk after. I'll help you. I'm going to stay till midnight. Okay? People don't see it. Okay? Here's Cam plan. Amazing. I've already talked to him about him. Self directed IRAs. Carl Fisher, the guy who's a rocket scientist. Every time I call Carl, he has the answer. He's just, he's just one of my best friends. I met him like eight years ago. And it is the best thing I ever did in my life because I would not be where I am today if I didn't have Carl. Now, what I do, what I used to do, I don't have to do it anymore, but if you see a self-directed AI company, you go to an event, <laughs> they think about this, right? I'm a little smart, right? right? You go to a real estate event and there's a self-directed IRA company. He's got a nice booth there, right? They're talking self-directed IRAs. Well, people were coming up to learn about self-directed IRAs. So I was the guy that used to stand there and people come up and say, hey, how's this work? Well, you can lend money to the real estate, and, you know, this is how you do it. And I'll be standing there and say, what's up? I'm looking for money. Yeah, this, this IRA stuff is really good. By the way, I flip and you can get involved with me if you want. I used to pull a chair right up next to that self-directed IRA table. <laughs> is it, is it <laughs> Whatever, Phil. All right, you got the camera plan thing? Yeah. You have a quick question? Just a quick one. If someone had like 200K in a 401k tomorrow, I mean, they're borrowing it at what, 2 3%? Yeah, I don't know that that well, but it could work that way. If your, company, asking, will, if your company will, you can borrow money from your company at a low rate, yeah, sure, yeah. you can do it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the rules for you lending that money out or what you're allowed to use it for. Um, but really, the rule is if you're working for a company of a 401k, you're probably not going to be able to move it to a self directed IRA company. They're not going to let you. But that's a good point. You might be able to borrow off someone's annuity. Um, I always forget about those. Some people have cash value in annuities that they could borrow off of two or three. You could borrow that money, but that's a good point. I think Thank you. 25K out of mine. Real quick, term. No, so one thing is if you borrow it out of a 401k, you might be able to return it to a self-directed 401k. Yeah, I don't know. See, he yeah. comes that's up with crazy Carl. stuff. That's crazy that's stuff. Jeremy comes up with crazy stuff. That's some Carl. All right, let me secure to a property. All right, this is how it works, okay? This is how it works. When I buy a piece of real estate and I go to one of my lenders, this is what I give them. This is the security for them. You should never take unsecured money from anyone. It's wrong, it's not right, and don't do it. It's illegal, it shouldn't be done. Do you get my point? You will cause problems for yourself, because if you don't do it, this, you will not, they will not be your marketing arm because someone's going to figure out that they lent you money unsecured. How many times have people in this room let unsecured money not secured to an asset? Well, somebody step up. No one's lent money and they got every single loan they back home. I don't want to talk about it. It's, it's <laughs> disgusting. I know what I'm doing. I owe my buddy $10,000 last year. He still hasn't paid me enough. He's supposed to be paid back in a month. But it's all good. Big dummy. But it's everybody. No one wants to admit it. Um, don't take the money unsecured. Do the right thing with someone's money. Secure the money. So, the note spells out the terms. My term is always one year. If you're starting out and you're going to start giving people 15% because you think that's going to be enticing to get the deal done, make someone's eyes open, you're wrong, you're going to lose money, maybe you'll make money, but I just think that rate is way too high. Get some confidence in yourself. This is what makes the deal work, 8 to 10%. 8 to 10 to 12 percent. If you, I'm telling, I'm going tomorrow to Kentucky to sit in front of about 9 to 13 guys. They won't even give me money at 12. They will think I am a fraud. Guys are very successful. Most wealthy people are just trying to make a good rate of return, 8 to 10 percent on their money. Don't overspend because you're desperate. You will get in trouble. If you're bought at 10%, 8% is a good rate. For the last two million I just raised at eight, I just raised a million at six. Now six is extremely hard. I never thought I would raise money at six, but um, these people don't even know what they're doing. I'm not educating them about anything. So <laughs> kidding, kidding joke. Uh, so the notes one year just spells out the terms. Year, interest rate. Okay, that's the terms. 
The mortgage is going to get recorded at the courthouse in their name, and that's where their security is. You're going to have title insurance, lenders insurance, you're going to make sure there's no liens and everything on the property. Everything goes to the title company. I never have anybody send me money to my bank account or my company's bank account. Every real estate transaction goes through a title company. Or if you're uh, in a lawyer state, Maryland, I think Jersey's a, I don't do business in Jersey, but I think there's a Jersey, a lawyer Jersey state, is. and you have title companies too, right? Yeah. Maryland's a complete lawyer state um, that, is, that is destroyed, but um, you got to make sure there's no liens and everything, okay? <clears throat> if your lender wants an appraiser, get a, a, an appraisal. Get them an after repair appraisal. Give them what they want. Show them. I really don't do it anymore, but um, you know, I explained the deal pretty well. Deed in lieu. Sign the deed. I sign the deed. You know, people. I'm not going to go into the deed in lieu. We can talk about it later. But it's always challenged. People go, "Oh, the deed in lieu is not worth anything." Well, I've used it before. It's work. Um, and then you want to make sure that if if Greg lends me money, I name him on the mortgagee clause and make sure if the property burns down that he gets paid, I don't get paid. That's the right way to do it. And then you can go a little bit further. You can go with confession of judgments and personal guarantees. I've never given those. I'm actually starting to give those now because a couple people down, I don't really care. And it's not, I'm not gonna fall on the deal anyway. But, you know, uh, you gotta be careful. With, I, I, no, no, you should, you should give it. I'll go that, I'll go the right route. Um, Personal guarantee, so if you default on that, uh, that loan to the LLC, you're personally um, guaranteeing that loan, okay? And if you explain to your, your, your lender, you get in the mind that they're like PNC Bank, and you know PNC Bank doesn't even ask for everything that I give people? I give them way more than the local banks and what um, uh, probably PNC would give them. Confession of judgment, you're going to have to go through the court process, you're confessing that you owe this person the money and you have to drag it all out. Give it all to them, they're your marketing arm, right? They're your marketing arm. So no mortgage, insurance, appraisal, deed lieu, confession of judgment, personal guarantees, give the whole boat. If this is too much for you to handle right now, you can call me next week and I'll walk you through it again, okay? Jeremy? Okay. You mentioned the, how much, this kind of just brings the point of the marketing arm. How much of your business is referral business? It's all business. referral business. It is? Pretty much 98% of it's referral business for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm going general solicitation um, for a different reason, um, not for your reason. I don't think anybody wants to see my ass on the billboard, but um, I'm doing it for different reasons. And I'll get into that a little bit later. I'm just happy to do it. Is everybody okay with this? No mortgage? Okay, if you need a little help, somebody with some help, you need some help, I'll help you later to walk through it. Um, Equity. If you're the lender, okay, even if you're borrowing money from someone, you've got to have equity in these deals. Don't take 80% loan to value from someone. So if your deal is going to be sold for 100, don't take 80, 85,000 for them. It's not going to work out for them. If you are a lender, I wouldn't lend more than 65% bottom line. The reason they got in trouble is because people get desperate. Their money's sitting there, oh, I'll lend you 75% on that deal. I'll lend you 80% on that deal. It just creates problems. If you're a lender, make sure you're secured. The whole thing, what the book teaches you, is the lender's in control. If you're lending money, you're in control. You get to dictate the terms. You don't walk into the bank and say, I'll take money at 1%, and I don't, don't worry about that note or record me. My lenders, I put them in control of the asset because if anything ever does happen to me, I want them to get their money back. So if I borrow money from them at 90%, I'm not doing the right thing for them. I don't go over 65% of the value of the house. I don't take from my lenders. That's it, 65%. And you know what? Us as rehabbers or flipping properties, if you're getting over 75%, you're not making money in your deals. Don't tell me that you are because you're not. If you were lending money, Okay. Um, why do we have draw schedules if you're lending money or if you're borrowing money from somebody? It's good for both ways. When you do draw schedules, okay, and say there's $100,000 that you're going to give them for money for their project, do you charge them for the interest that they don't have yet? For the gross loan, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Sorry. Brutal. Uh, Good friends of yours, I felt. <laughs> so draw schedule. So if you are lending on a property, this is so important, okay? So, so important. 
So if you're gonna do a $200,000 deal, I'm gonna give you, uh, you're doing a $200,000 deal, I'm gonna give you, say, $100,000 to buy the property, and maybe I give you $20,000, not really, but maybe I give you $20,000 to start the rehab, right? That's all I wanna give him, that's it. Until he performs on the first, on the first $20,000 worth of work. Because if I give him the whole $100,000 and he just takes off, I'm stuck with a $100,000 property. Right? Do you understand that? Are you good? So, you, I'm going to say to him, who was lending who mine? Right? I was lending you the money. So I'm going to say to you, I'm going to give you the 20 grand, get the work done, I'm going to come by, you're going to show me everything that you were supposed to do for the first 20 grand, then I'll write you a check for another 20 grand. Get that done, then I'll give you another 20 grand. Get that done, I'll give you another 20 grand. The way it should work. It's protection, protection, protection. The way it should work. Now, some people, now, my people, right, and once they got used to me, they wouldn't let me do draw schedules with them. They were nuts. I mean, I wasn't ever going to lose their money. I didn't think I was ever, you don't ever go in thinking you're going to lose money. But <laughs> Michael, he was like, no way, my man. <laughs> you're taking all of it or you ain't getting any of it because he wanted interest on all the money at the same time, but he was also putting himself in a bad position. Um, I had a girl that used to drive me crazy. I don't do business with her anymore. It was probably seven years ago. And she was doing some hard lending money to me. And she would drive me crazy with the paperwork. She would go to this lawyer and the paperwork would be this much. She would drive me nuts. And I really needed her at that point. Really, the paperwork's not that much, right? But her paperwork, she thought she was getting a, a more secure deal because her paper was five times more and she was paying $2,500 to her lawyer. So she gave me money on this lot down the temple when I started building a temple. And um, so she gave me 300,000. The lot cost 100 grand. She gave me the whole 300 grand up front. So I just wanted to, she just, I liked her, but I actually really didn't like her, but I liked her money. So I called her next day. I said, this is really cool. I'm going to Hawaii for the next 10 years with all your money. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, you've got a nice piece of dirt sitting there at 2024 North 15th in Philly. It's worth about probably, I don't probably depreciated in the past two weeks. So really you're going to get 80 back, but I'm going to take the other 200 and go have a good time. There's been nothing just she could have done about it. She put herself in a bad position, but it all worked out. I asked the um, if you're in this business, okay, transparency, okay, you want people to understand your business, right? So what I used to do down at Temple, and I'll give you a couple more things and I'll even see it on here. Introduce people to your partners. Introduce people to your contractors. I used to take them down. We'd meet at like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock down in Philly at Temple. I'd take them to a property that was finished. I'd take them to a property that wasn't finished, right? And then we would go to lunch and hang out and we'd talk about the deal, right? I would show them our portfolio. I, it made them feel like they were involved and they could see something that I was doing. It's pretty cool. Really, really worked. But then I got to the point where we were too big, right? How was I already got eating problems, and I was going to lunch every other day, and I had all these people coming through. So guess what we have today, right? Technology, okay? Okay, film what you're doing. Have your contractor just take a nice little film with the first $20,000 worth of work, and then email it to your lender. Hey, Mr. Lender, hey, Paul, here's what we got done over the first three weeks. This is what we've accomplished. This is what your money's doing for us, and um, thank you very much. Didn't have to even leave the house, right? Contractor did the work, sent it to me, and I would email it to them. They get an email, pop it up, and they see their property, they see their money. I'm telling you, that's awesome. If, does anyone do that in here? Does anybody really have our properties in here? Okay, good. It's really good. I mean, it really works. Send them a video. They love it. Okay. Letters want to know. We talked about this earlier. Am I going to sell the property? Am I going to keep the property? And the time period? talked about this a little bit earlier. Let your investor, educate your investor what you're going to do with the property. Okay? This is what I would do. Okay? Or this is what I did. An investment brief about your company, about you, about your employees. Small. Not 10 pages. Try to do it in one page or a page and a half. Okay? So profile the company. How many deals you've done? How many deals you're doing now? How much money you've raised? What's your background? Where did you learn how to rehab houses? Okay? This is what you need to do. Not, you don't need to do it, but you're going to be more successful in raising money. Okay? Is there any officers, the bios? 
how many bought, properties you bought, sold, rehab, okay, before and after pictures of your deals. <laughs> I got in like my 26 deal when we weren't taking before pictures. Totally idiotic mistake that I made. Don't make the mistake, the same mistake I made. When you're starting to do a rehab, you're going to do your first one. Take, uh, take all the pictures out of that property that will before and after. You'll have to be able to put in and show people. The percent you made on each deal. Show them. If you didn't make any money on a deal, that's really good. It's good to show them that you're human. Don't show them something and don't ever fudge the numbers. It is what it is. That's the way it works out. You know, a fib is only just temporary, right? A lie is just temporary. You're just putting off time. Show them what you're doing. It'll be better. Timeline from the time you purchased properties um, to the sold date. But I don't know how long it's taken to sell your properties. Okay. Is everybody okay right now? All right. So here's my follow-up care, okay? Phone call after closing, I told you that. Send the video during the rehab process, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, that follow up call, could I have done anything better? You'll see what's going on. That's the most important. Could I have done anything better in the process that I've given you? It's only going to make you better. You know, I had a guy come to me two years actually who I'm going to see tomorrow. We became really good friends. And um, two years ago, we we were already established and we were raising a lot of money and this guy called me up because I want to get involved with you. When I tell you this guy pulled me through the ringer, he was like the FBI. He called my lawyer, I gave my accountant number, I gave him investors for me to call, and it took about six months for him to give me money. But you know what? He wanted to see paperwork, he wanted to see financials, but you know what it did for me? I was getting a little aggravated after about four months, but it made me better. It made me be more prepared. It was really good for me. I didn't realize it until about four months in, but I realized that what he was putting me through with an exercise that was really good for my company. And it made me better for when I went to my next investor, and now he's given me over two million, 